today, everyone, we got to play... Murano. Yes, yeah, so this game, it says it's a city builder... Economic. Economic. So that's what Board Game Geek rates or classifies this as. I don't, I don't, I don't I know. I mean, you have, you do manage money. There, there is through, some money. But it's kind of a resource more than it is that you're trying to earn money. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. So, but before we get into it, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell because board games are awesome and we have a few coming up. This one particularly. A few? We have a lot coming up. <laughs> We've got like years and years worth of coming up. <laughs> well, I meant like, anyway. Anyway, so this is actually one of the Christmas gifts that you got this year. Mm -hmm. um, so this is out Santa of print. Santa is good to me. Yes, Santa. Santa spent a lot of money. Anyway, so. <laughs> or used up his magic, whatever, depending on, you know. Um, so tell us more about this game. All right, so this was released in 2014. Mm -hmm. It is has a Board Game Geek rating of 7.2 currently, and a Board Game Geek rank of 1,189. That's pretty good, right? Yeah, not bad. I mean, considering it's 2014 release. Yeah, and it's still holding strong, so. Uh, it's two to four players, 60 to 75 minutes, and I think that's about right. I, we play yeah, it. I feel like that's, that's correct. Age 10 and up. Uh, Probably, uh, it doesn't have to be, well, I, I, I think no, it's a little advanced for Sarah. No, the iconography is pretty, I would I would say 10 and up is fine. Okay. Uh, it is designed by Inca Brand and Marcus Brand. I'm assuming they're related. I think we had their names come up before on a game. Um, published by Lookout Games. Uh, now, I've heard of them before. Yes. <laughs> uh, it's a... I consider this a tile placement uh, action selection game uh, with in-game scoring being a main focus of it. Uh, it has an MSRP of $59.99, which is pretty pricey, but Amazon has it for $39.99. On the geek market, some people are selling it new to new, like new for $30 to $35. So yeah. you can find it at a decent price. Yeah, so this is out of print, correct? I would assume so, but the fact that Amazon still has it as cheap as it does means they either have a lot of stock in it or it's been reprinted. But I don't, I don't know of it being reprinted. Now, yeah. uh, this version we have says it's the complete edition. Well, the complete edition, the only thing it means is it has a promo that is just a Christmas tree promo, which actually was kind of cool that it was Christmas. Uh, uh, this actually needed this. This needed that. Yeah. But uh, it also says it was a, a spiel, uh, one of the award, I won't even try to pronounce it, but one of the award uh, play, con candidates for in 2015. Spills, yeah, fourth place. Yep. So, all right, so let's talk about quality of components. What quality of components? <laughs> oh. I mean, okay, listen, you got... You got wooden standard meeples. I'm sorry, I think I go back to sorry. You have wooden cubes again. Yeah. I well, the boats do look like gondolas, except for the one. Oh, we have oh, as as always. I get a broken one. Of course you do. So uh, yeah, our red gondola is. I I would not want to be the gondolier who's trying to navigate with this. Yeah. One. Um. As far as card quality, they're very smooth, no texture, pretty thin. Um. I mean, they're okay. They're just not great. Yeah. Um, and then you've got the tiles, which, I mean, standard... The standard cardboard Standard chips. cardboard yeah. tiles there. Uh, so, for me, I can't give this any... You have the little plastic gems, but these are typical, like, Ascension Yeah, I mean, I, I would probably give this a five and a half, maybe a six. I mean, what are your thoughts? Yeah, probably right there with a five and a half. I, I mean, the fact that it's got a board puts it slightly above Catan for me. But the, uh, the component quality, other than that, is pretty much Catan level. Yeah. So five is our standard. So, yeah, I would say five and a half at the best. Yeah. All right. So now let's move on to theme. So the theme, obviously, is you've got these gondolas and these multiple um, cities that are islands that you go about and that you um, build streets and build different shops. And you're trying to get the pedestrians to go to your shops. You don't try. It's just you got to match the pedestrians with the appropriate shop in that vicinity that laid that groundwork. Um, you know, it's a theme. Yeah. Uh, it's it's on there. Um, yeah, I mean, it's definitely, it, it doesn't feel like it's intrinsic to the gameplay, but it is kind of cool that you've got the, the boats going around the city, and that's really key to the game. 
I do like that. That was the one caveat with the theme is this is where I guess maybe the theme went into the gameplay. And you actually don't, I don't, I don't recall seeing this action selection very much of this circle and moving it up. I mean, you see some where you select tiles based on this circle, but then the tiles are gone where this is, you know, so you, there's a lot of actual strategy in Mm -hmm. trying to be like, all right, well, I'm not moving something off the build space because I know my opponent needs it. So that limits me, you know, so there's some strategy there about yeah. which gondolin do you move because there are some actions that are, you know, occur twice on the board. So it's like, okay, well, which one do I move? Which one, you know, and then there's like, sometimes you get blockades where you have three in a row and you can't move them. So you have to, okay, well, I got to unbog this. Where do I go? So I thought that that was an interesting theme component that um, I actually thought was pretty cool. And that kind of goes with gameplay too. Yeah, but... I'd say as a gameplay component, it may play into the theme because, you know, the bottom right. and I think that's bumping the... into one another. I, so I, for me, I think that was the only part of this theme that kind of incorporated into gameplay is where I was trying to go with that. Um, other than that, I don't think the theme is horribly strong. Um... No, it's definitely not. It's I I mean, I, I like the, the fact that it is set in, you know, like a Venice or actually, I guess it's Murano, but it, I assume it's like a Venice type city. I've never been, so I wouldn't know. But have to put it on our to-do list. Yeah. So, but I, I mean, I like the, the, that I've not seen that in a game and the way that they did incorporate with the boats, I thought was pretty clever. So I'll give it a little kudos for that. I'll probably give it a six because of that. But it's, I, I mean, other than that, it's completely just a territory, you know, place your tiles and it, it doesn't well, really it's not matter. even territory even. Well, it is in the sense that you're trying to build your island up to such a way that your scoring cards will score. So Right, but like other people can... Uh, contributed it because there were like some it's just like how many ever blue buildings were on an island yeah. right or how many oh, yeah. whatever so it's, it's not like you own the territory i'm not saying no that. no no you just got to manage what's in the territory or choose your end of game bonuses wisely to match mm-hmm. the territory that's already there you know so um all right so you gave it a six for theme I- i'm fine with that that's fine all right so moving on to rules you, you said it was pretty easy to read. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, like, it didn't take you long to get this out rule, and get it ready. The rule to... book is 12 pages long. Uh, the front cover just is like a partial cover, and then mm-hmm. it goes into the contents of what's in the box. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, the, you got the golden setup, the typical standard things. It, the, the, I had to do a couple. I was mostly because I was tired when I was reading this, and I was watching my teams actually win this week in fantasy football oh my goodness (laughs) um so i'm in the final game in one of my four cotton leagues so and i know nothing about football so you know there's that so i I think you know more than you think you. well my team is called the nirvana (laughs) know-nothing and it's because i'm not a sports fan at all my buddy brian suckered me in to playing and i like but now you know stuff so i know more than i should know i don't deserve to know as much as i know because i'm (laughs) definitely not a sports guy uh but anyway um you know it, it goes the main focus of it is how the actions work and that's really the main focus of the game too um, it is color coded and segmented, and then they go into all the different actions. Like I said, that's what takes up most of the space of the book. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's very clear; everything's very well written. It's not the most attractive book. I mean, it's pretty bland, but it, you know, the color bars are very effective. Uh, it doesn't have any kind of sidebars to call out, but then it goes through all the cards too. So there's an index for all the cards and that's what takes up the other half of the book is just the making sure that all the cards are explained. And I like that when there's, you know, explanations in case you, you know, they don't do partial. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's a very effective book. I'll give it an eight. I mean, it, I think it's well written and it's easy to follow. Yeah. All right. So great job on that front. Okay. So now then let's talk about gameplay. So gameplay is pretty straight. Uh, we say that. Yes. Be so uh, conscious uh, of that. So, um, but anyway, so basically you're moving a gondola, how many ever spaces you want to move them, but understand that if a boat gets in your way, you have to push the boat forward. Well, you don't push it. It takes like extra actions, which you can pay for with coin. But you know, you start the game with five coin, and money is your limiting factor. Uh, in this no game, joke. Especially early game. So. Yeah. Well, on your turn, you can you move one boat. What you can you can either play take take the action or pass. If you pass, you get a coin, but you still have to move a boat. 
and you're going to ba basically just travel around the perimeter of the board, but there are eight boats on the board, being cognizant that you cannot pass or land on another boat. Right. So you're going to have to move stuff out of your way, so it creates these bottlenecks as you play. Um, and you, But if you want to move, you, there's no limiter to say you can't move other boats out of your way, except for the fact you have to pay a coin for, for the second movement, a two coins for the third movement, and so on. So it gets pricier. You could move potentially all eight boats on your turn if you wanted, but it would be kind of silly. Um, so the main reason is just to clear out the territory that you want to get to so you can take an action, which there are multiple uh, spaces on the board for most actions, but there are some that are only one. Yeah. Um, so you just got to keep in mind, if you do pass your turn, you get a coin. That's your consolation prize. Yeah, it's not a great constellation prize, but guys. But we used it early game a lot. Uh, but yes, we did. Yes, we did. Because <laughs> um, you kept taking all the money spots. He is greedy. Um, all right. So anyway, so you move the gondola and you take the different actions. So some of those actions consist of buying a tile. There are four, five different tiles um, available um, for that you have to pre-purchase before you go to the build phase, which is the red buildings, which give you a special ability card a um, gold building that mostly maximizes on victory points. Then you have the shops, which give you medium victory points, but can increase your income when you go to the income um, action uh, based on how many customers on the island for that kind of shop, because there's multiple, there's different colored shops. And then you have your green um, shop, which is your glass blowers. Now, your glass blowers. There's a production for glass blowers as well. However, it's a little bit different. For every glass that you blow, you create pollution and therefore get negative penalties. Um, so you get negative victory points. However, it is a great way to earn money. So it's kind of an exchange victory points for money. And early on, early on, that was very beneficial. But towards the end, it kind of cost you. I think the well, win. Well, yeah. I mean, there, there are some of the in-game bonus cards, which we'll get to in a minute, that are based upon the uh, different colors glass and they are the probably the most bit lucrative cards in the deck but you pay a penalty to get the glass and if you don't draw the right color of glass because there's red green and blue early on it would have been fine though because you could have sold off and that money is very very useful in the very beginning but like you had way too much money um, at the end yes the money, um, and the money is worth nothing except for a tiebreaker yeah which which I think that's for to say it's an economic game, I'm like, eh, I don't know if I, because winning's not the game yeah. condition. <laughs> um, all right, so th so you have, so then, so you can purchase those different tiles depending on the thing on the board, but then there is also the actual building of them. So once you have the tiles, you can build them on whatever different islands. You can build up to three of these tiles. Now, caveat, you can also build roads. So the roads go, they are um, dedicated on the map of where the roads are supposed to be. And when you flip over the road tile, there can possibly be um, buyers, right? So depending on where you place them, you can have a certain island that's maybe more beneficial towards blues or just, you know, have a, a bunch of different things. Because when you go to produce income based on shops, you get to choose an island and you get to choose one shop of each color and get that victory point. So it's assuming almost, you own that shop. Assuming that you own that shop. So, um, you know, so for example, in this one here, I owned a blue, a gray and a red shop. So I get, I got all the things, right? Um, but that's not necessarily always the best thing because two of these roads have no visitors whatsoever. So that was kind of a penalty. Um, I didn't think about that when I placed them. I should have put them on another island, but it is, you know, that ends up what happening. Um, um, so there's that piece of it. So you can build three of any of these buildings. So the roads don't cost you anything. The other ones you would have had to have purchased prior to. Um, and the, but there's no cost to actually build them once you're at that location, a max of three tiles. All right, so one of the last things that you can do is buy end of game victory points. So there are three cards. So basically you can choose to pay a certain amount of gold to take three cards, choose one, discard the rest. And you could do this multiple times in that same action, but the more times you do it, the increased cost, uh, it costs increase. So um, then the other thing that you can do is to make these end of games worth actually anything you have to get your um, gondoliers. Gondoliers actually on the aisle that you're hoping to trigger it. Okay, and to be able to do that, you're going to pay two to five money based on the location that you're going to be, be placing, and you're going to put it on the circle. And then that way, at the end of the game, you can choose to move them on the island and trigger one of these cards. 
and that's how you know it gets taken up. I do want to note that you are not limited to once per island because like you did, mm -hmm. you stole my spot <laughs> by paying more money. And so I wasn't able to do that unless I wanted to pay additional, but you got to use that island twice. So I thought that that was actually a pretty interesting component. Um, so that's, oh, then there's one uh, space that gives you two money. Woohoo. Um, and then there's it's another. It's done really a game a lot. Well, yeah, you keep you kept stealing it. Um, all right, so then the one of the other actions, the last one on the board that we haven't really discussed is that guess what? I had an extra. Well, I was broke, <laughs> and so I ended up selling one of these for three, or you could buy another one for three. So you could. Um, that's that's the other action space. I think that's pretty much all the actions, correct? Yeah, I believe so. You, you yeah. buy the different buildings. You play the buildings. Uh, oh no, we, we didn't talk about the glass blowing. So the glass blowing oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. is for every glass blowing location that you have built that is if you got one of your cubes on it, you can trigger that action and decide whether you want to build blow glass for, or not. If you do blow the glass, as we mentioned earlier, you lose victory points. Two but per glass that you pull. For you draw randomly from this bag to get your glass. If you know however many, let's say I built three, I draw three out of the bag. And now at, at, you have the option immediately to sell as many of the one color of those as you want. You can sell one for five money, two for 12, or three for 20. So it's a great way to generate money. But as we mentioned, you lose two victory points per tile. So I would have lost six victory points in this draw. And but then in the case, so he would have sold this blue, got 12 money, and then had a red. Now, where the expansion comes into play, and I and I say expansion very, very loosely. Yes. It's um, so basically, you have this tree, and as you produce, only when you produce um, either money or these gems, you can place them on this card and get victory points for that, which helped alleviate some of the pain of going to... Um, the glass blower. The glass blower. Um, so basically, you're decorating a tree for the island and hopefully bringing cheer and joy so they don't mind a little pollution. Yeah. Um, so that is essentially the game. And what I was talking about before is the component with the gondolas I thought was actually pretty interesting. I thought it was as well. Uh, I thought that that was actually a unique component that I, I actually kind of appreciated. Um, I wish the theme was a little bit hardier. I wish the pieces were a little bit more because... That, I know, brought the feeling down for me a little bit. But, but gameplay-wise, I think it was there. Yeah. Oh, I like the fact that, and I like the fact that you get these in-game scoring. Like, early on, That's I knew... That's your favorite thing. I, I knew that getting something as a goal would be important. So, I first action I did was buy one of these cards so that I had something to shoot for. And, uh, you know, because gearing the islands towards what your cards are is really what the game's all about. So you want to try to get something to have a des yeah. destination to aim for. But I do want to say that is not the only way. Because I got most of my victory points through building buildings. Mm -hmm. Specifically the the um, gold buildings. But the, and it really helped that I yeah. got this card. Um, and then I went crazy on this. But that was four victory points for every tile. So two money, four victory points, and two actions. That's not a bad turnaround. On top of, I ended up with an end game that gave me extra um, for every every gold building on a thing. So that kind of yeah. worked out for me. So, but most of the points I scored was actually before yeah. the game when, ended. When we ended the game, she was 20 points ahead of me. I ended up way passing her by doing these in-game oh, yeah, scoring. Just... And then you played your in-game scores. We ended in a tie. Yeah. And he won strictly by, by the, the tiebreaker, which is the money. Yeah. So I thought, you know, that was interesting that there's, I like games where there's lots of ways to score. And this game definitely has that. You got you get scoring by playing buildings, and you did a lot of that. You get scoring by different types of cards that you can collect, which some of which are going to be based upon the gym, some are which about which buildings arrangements you've got. But you know the thing is, is some of these are really tough. I mean, when you get them, it's like well, you yeah. have to be on a specific island and have a specific condition that and that they're worth a lot of points if you manage to pull it off. So it's well, it was you know, like mine was is having as many glass blowers as I had tokens on a fortress yeah uh, or all the fortress or all the palaces within that thing and luckily when I got the card I had there were three spots left of, of the island and so I made sure I could fill up all three spots when I went to build because then it, I was able to trigger that you know so it was pretty much luck and yeah. I and I and, took the luck it was 12 played, victory points I needed it but we so, played it two player if you had four players that would be a lot harder Oh, absolutely it would. But I, I think it's very interesting. And I, I, I feel like it could only get better. Mm -hmm. 
with more players. I think but so I as well. still think it's a solid two player. Yeah, as well. I, yeah, it was fun as two player. I think it would be better with four, three or four. Uh, but yeah, I think this is a definitely. A, I mean, it's there's not a lot of complexity to it. It was simple to learn, but yet there's a lot of strategy and how you want to manage your game. And I like games like that. Easy to learn, yeah. easy to teach, and but there's still enough meat in them to keep your interest. Yes. Um, so again, I would definitely play it differently because I now I now knowing some things. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, because you built like a lot of red cards and like. My one red card helped me out so much. I don't know what your other red cards were. Mine were just basically I got to pay cheaper to play my guys onto the board, and I got a victory point when I did it. I had two of them that kind of went hand in hand, and then I got a five point victory point oh, bonus man. like you did, and I got one where if I took two coin, I'd get four. But that yeah. came way too late in the game. If I had that early in the game, it would have been useful. But I got it like that was the last card I got. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right. So anyway, lots of fun. Let's give it a score. You know, I. I really like the concept and the feel of this game. I do think it's a little dated, but it's not bad. I'm going to give it a 7.5, I think. Yeah, I'm actually okay with that. I think the gameplay is very, very solid, um, but it does feel dated. And, and I'm really bummed about that because the gameplay-wise, I think there's a lot there. Mm -hmm. um, but if you think about it, is this going to stick out in my mind... I might bring it up every once in a while. Hey, what's that game that, you know, with the bolts and the stuff? <laughs> like, well, to be fair, that's how you describe every game. So well, No, because then I'll be like, you know, the bolts around the board. So, <laughs> uh, but can, you know, because other than that, that, there's not a memor memorable piece or actually. Actually, I thought it was really funny that we got this out at Christmas time and it has <laughs> this Christmas tree bonus in it because it was like complete. Completely had no idea that was going to be there. So I, I thought that was a you know, perk, nice perk. I know. I was like, hey, you picked out a Christmas tree game. Because I've been jonesing for like a real actual Christmas game. Because the one we got last year was, it was. <laughs> yeah, it, it existed. <laughs> um, all right. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us. We had an absolute blast. And we'll catch you guys later. Bye. Bye. Today we got to play Marino. So Murano. Want to try it again? How do you say it? Murano. Like a Muro. Murano. Not Marino. Wait. You said Marino. Right. What is it? Murano. Murano. It might be Murano, but it's definitely not Marino because there's no. I in it. You keep saying it the wrong way and I get my... Murano. Or Murano. It's one of those two. Murano. Hello today, everyone. Today we got to play Mur... You did this to me. This is your fault. You get to say the name. Hello today, everyone. Today we got to play... <laughs> I know, I was talking. <laughs> You're using this for paper. I totally am. Okay. Did you forget to say hello? Ha, ha, and then low. I'm going to shove a fork in here. <laughs>